Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of the Tour, and as we have been saying, uh, besides the first month of the year, the, the rest, or most of the next group, focus on the love or the grace of His only begotten Son. Uh, the first chapter, the first month, as we said, is the love of God the Father. Then the love, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so, regarding the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, last month we spoke of His power. This month we we speak of the preparation for His Word in our heart. And so, as you probably remember. Uh, the gospel of today is related to that of last Sunday. Um, very few times in the church do we repeat the same theme um, one week after another. And when we do, um, as Abun was saying last week, um, it's, it's a crucial message. <clears throat> so we've heard of the parable of the sower many times, I'm sure. And we know the different types of ground and often what they um, resemble according to the word of the Lord from the gospel of last week, uh, according to St. Luke. Um, but just some points. So the first point is that um, almost all the parables, as does this one, the theme is what? Salvation, more specifically. The kingdom of God, right? So if you look at especially most of the parables, around 30 of them, um, you find most of them are in Matthew chapter 13. And uh, the Lord began with this one, but the ones after this, the Lord says, the kingdom of heaven is like, right? And some are short and some are long. Some have explanations, um, some don't. But um, so when we look at this parable, we and the Lord explained it for us, as we said, Christ is the seed, Christ is the sower, Christ is the fruit, right? So the main message, we need to get to the kingdom, but we can't do it out without the Holy Trinity, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. We can't be saved by ourselves and by own works, but we need His grace. <clears throat> he is the goal, but He is always the means to that goal. Sometimes we beat ourselves up because we can't get to the goal properly, because maybe we don't depend enough on his grace and more on our own strength. <clears throat> the other point is that when the sower came to sow, he did he did so uh, seemingly haphazardly. So any um, wise farmer would have just found the good ground and planted the seed there. But it seems like he's just going everywhere, all over the place. <clears throat> And some people explain this is because most farmers back in that time, in that location, would till the ground after. So that's one explanation. But more, I think, more importantly is that um, the Lord deals with us not as we are, but as He knows what we could be. So the Lord sees the potential in us that He has planted in us, and He deals with us accordingly what we could be, and what He wants us to be, and what He knows we can be, instead of what we are right now. Um, <clears throat> so He doesn't look at the hard heart, or the distracted heart, or the lustful heart, but He works with it and, and sends His Word to it regardless, because He knows His Word has power. And if we are simply just receive the Word and, and deal with it better, then it will take root in us and grow fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Uh, <clears throat> the, the other point is, as the Lord said, as the Father has sent me, I send you. As the Lord is the sower, sometimes when we bear fruit, God asks us to be sowers as well. So regarding this aspect of the sower, we also need to, to throw and scatter the seed haphazardly, meaning we shouldn't look at the outward uh, person or people that we deal with, but with the potential that maybe this word 
um, <clears throat> that we share with them will take root in them. So we don't feel like some people are unworthy of my love or my teaching or my care because um, of their shortcomings, because we all have shortcomings, whether because of their age or their background or their personality or their status or their intelligence or their, even their level of faith. Oh, you're not a believer? I'm not going to talk to you about the Bible. No, the Lord wants us to share this, this grace with others. That's one of the ways that the gospel is, is, is spread, not just by the apostles or by missionaries. Everyone should be, um, in essence, a missionary, <clears throat> just by living the proper uh, Christian life. <clears throat> so just like the, the sower in this parable didn't judge the soil beforehand, um, we are not to judge others when we scatter the seed of the word of God to others. Um, <clears throat> and even we see this, for example, like, um, in the end of the gospel according to St. John, when um, the Lord told him, St. Peter, actually, he tells St. Peter, follow me. And then he turns and points to St. John, what about him? He said, don't worry about him, you follow me, right? So sometimes we're worrying about others and looking about just Focus on your salvation. Focus on your uh, responsibility to um, to yourself, to those who love, and maybe even to share the gospel with others. Don't look um, to to see if this ground is good. Okay, I'll plant my seed here. When sometimes when people or even servants or parents do that, I'm going to focus on this person more than this person. Sometimes the opposite happens, where we do probably. A worse job than we expected um, or we give a bad example to the person that we focused on and the person that we left alone is actually growing in Christ much more <clears throat> sometimes the Lord does this to remind us no, it's not your work it's mine um, <clears throat> and you scatter to all as much as you can without discerning um, and and I will I will make the increase like you know St. Paul says you know I planted Apollos water but God gave the so God is the one who does the work. Like that was the first point that we said. Um, <clears throat> uh, the the next point is that we're all called to be the good soil, um, and some people think, well, I am just this type of soil. No, it's more of a, a temporary um, state, that spiritual state that we are in. So we could possibly be all of the soil at different points in our life or maybe even different points in our day. But the, the point of the matter is that we need to reassess and, and deal with the weaknesses that we have in our hearts so that the word of God, when it is implanted in our heart, will grow and, and bear fruit. So um, as the good soil, though, the main, one of the main jobs of the soil is to do what? Just to take the seed deep in. And, and let it work, and to keep it. So this keeping of the word, the keeping of the word of God in our heart, keep it in our mind, we keep it in our, on our lips. <clears throat> and this phrase, keep uh, the word, is, is mentioned very much, very often in scripture. Like what the Lord says in the gospel according to St. John, again, chapter 14, he says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father and I will love him, we will come to him and dwell or make our home with, with him. So, uh, and then if you look at um, one of the, long, the longest psalm, Psalm 119, um, in, and a lot of the passages are found um, in the midnight prayer, that's basically the theme, is to keep the word of God and to obey and to submit to it. Um, <clears throat> and so our job is to keep the word. Um, the servant's job might be to plant and to water, and God's job is to bring the increase, but I just hold on to the word of God as much as we can. What does that mean? Um, <clears throat> well, first we have to read. And I'm sure a lot of us, thank God, are reading scripture. Maybe it's not as often as we should. Maybe it's not as deep as we should. Um, maybe we're not, we're reading, but we're not learning or, or going deep into the understanding, um, whether by sermons or commentaries or what. And maybe we're not reading with the, with the intent to apply. Uh, like we say, make us worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospel. <clears throat> so if we read with this goal and this mentality, then we, we approach the Bible differently. Um, and 
one of the only successful ways to read scripture is to do it in the spirit of prayer. So when we realize I'm coming to word, read this great word, but also I, I need it to take root in me, um, then we say, God, I need your help. You are the sower, you are the seed, you are the fruit. Do something in me when I approach to read this holy word of God. That's why the church in the, uh, in, in the services, before we read the gospel, we have to say, wait a second, let's pray first, right? Um, and you might not notice this, but in, when we read the Pauline epistle and the Catholic epistle and the Acts, um, there are prayers that are being done by the priest on, on behalf of, of you while you're listening. Um, so don't think it's just the gospel, but no, it's, it's, it's all of scripture. But the church just wanted to focus um, on, on those readings at the time. <clears throat> but when it comes to the gospel, we say, no, no, let's, let's do this one <laughs> out loud together. Um, so when you come to read the scriptures at home, don't forget to pray. Because what's the point of just hearing if you're not speaking to him? Um, or, or what's the point of saying, I'm going to understand this without the wisdom that comes from God? Um, <clears throat> and not only that, not just the wisdom, but it's the power to, to live according to it. We need power. To, so we know that sometimes we know what we need to do, but we don't have the power. So the Word of God does not only give us instruction, but it gives us power. It gives us the ability to obey what we hear and what we read. Um, <clears throat> and so we don't have time to go into all, you know, all the distractions and problems that we have when we come to read. But if we just see, see this goal in, in our minds when we come to read, then it will take more root in us. And even sometimes, like when we said, in the spirit of prayer, sometimes even the prayers themselves, like uh, the, the Agbeya, the um, a prayer book, right? It, it's filled with scripture. It's filled with the Psalms and the Gospels. And, and sometimes even when you come to pray using those, God will speak to you through those very words of scripture. <clears throat> um, and so uh, that's kind of what helps remove the distraction from us. And when you hear God speaking to you when you read the word, you will know, you will feel it. And you might even dwell on it and say, okay, this is my take home um, message for the day to apply this day and, and all the days afterward, but especially that day. And if you, if you don't necessarily have that sense, then maybe there's something regarding these um, other soil that's wrong. Maybe there's too many distractions. Maybe um, it's the amount of time and effort you're putting into it. Like if you compare all the other time that you have in the day to receive instruction, whether at work or at school or media or social, how much time and effort you're putting in that versus how much time and effort we're putting in to reading the, the, the word. <clears throat> the last point is, uh, as you probably notice with with a lot of the um, even the gospel and the synexarium of today um, how the church responds to those negative influences of the soil in the world is that we simply can't just remove but we have to replace with something good right so for example like all saints day we remove the the evil of it and we replace with remembering the living saints, right? And this is what the church did in history, like the Christmas or the nativity feast. Had it come about, they were celebrating a pagan feast um, and the Christian said, no, we have to celebrate Christ. The, the Sinisterium of today, they were celebrating a, a, another pagan feast and the patriarch said, no, we celebrate Archangel Michael and we'll still give to the poor, we'll still celebrate, but in, in the name of God and his saints. <clears throat> and so we do the same thing with Thanksgiving. We do the same thing with, with finding the purpose of, of Christmas and the New Year. <clears throat> and what does it need to... Also, it, it applies in my spiritual life. If there's something wrong with, with how I'm living or a, a bad habit I need to remove, you have to replace it with a good one, right? <clears throat> um, or something at least neutral. But the church recommends the positive, not just the neutral, um, as, as much as we can. Okay? Um, because um, not only does this pertain to our actions, but also the way we think. So 
if I'm thinking how bad I am all the time, well, maybe you should think about how good God is, right? The big difference. Um, yes, we're supposed to remember our sins and repent, but if we don't accept the, the forgiveness from God, then what's the point of repenting, right? <clears throat> um, and it's actually not called repentance. That's just depression. <laughs> um, if, if I'm focusing on how, um, how much I need to change versus how much God has changed me, like, don't just focus on the soil only, but look at the seed and let the seed take root in you. Because maybe we remove the thorn, but then we remove the seed too. That's not going to help, right? Um, maybe we remove the rocky ground, and then we take the seed as well. Uh, or we don't water. No, we have, to, we have to do what we were doing spiritually, and maybe even add to it, so that the negative uh, sins and habits and temptations will we'll not have its focus in our hearts and in our actions. <clears throat> um, so, so to conclude, um, when it comes to bearing fruit um, or sowing um, or scattering, God does the work. We just have to participate in that work and don't work against Him. Um, we are reminded by, we, it, it's not really our interpretation of who deserves the, the seed, God um, gives to all, and based on that person's response, um, God works in, in, in them. And then finally, we keep the word as best as we can. We take it deep into our, our minds and our hearts, and we give time, um, even if it's 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, and, and that time hopefully will grow when you see the fruit that is coming from it in your life. Glory be to him now and to the age of ages. Blessed are they.